What's up, everybody? Welcome to Heresy Financial. My name is Joe Brown. $1.9 trillion. That is how much money the United States government has spent during its fiscal year, its budget year so far, in excess of its total income. Just in case you didn't get that. So far for fiscal year 2021, the United States government has pulled in, in income, $2.143 trillion dollars. The federal government spent all of that, they blew through that, and on top of that, spent an additional 1.9 trillion dollars so far. Now I know these numbers are staggering and it leads most people who look at these numbers to think, man, our national debt must just be exploding. Not so fast. It's actually had very little impact on our national debt over the last couple of months, even though spending has been exploding. So we're going to take a look at why, and if it's not the national debt that's a problem as a result of all this spending, is there any problem to it at all? Ready? Let's dive in. All right, so in case you're not aware, the federal government's fiscal year begins October 1st, which means that the numbers that we're looking at so far for the uh, fiscal year, the budget, the deficits, the amount of income, the amount of expenses, all of that starts October 1st every year. And so we are looking at this year to date in terms of fiscal year, not calendar year. A couple days ago, the updated numbers came out for April and showed the whopping amount of money that the government is spending, but the story doesn't end there. So let's look at some of the numbers. In April, the deficit was $225.58 billion. So just in case you're not aware, a deficit is simply the difference between income and expenses. Just like you, if you make five grand in a month from your paychecks, but you spend six grand, there's only two ways that, that is possible. Number one, you used debt. You borrowed additional money beyond your income in order to expand your expenses, or you had previously earned that income that you put into savings and you drew on that. That's the only two ways that you can spend more than you earn, and that's the only way that the government can spend more than they earn. The only difference is that when you earn money, you're actually providing value to society and you're not using force to take money out of somebody else's pocket. Now, like I said at the beginning of the video, the deficit so far for the fiscal year is one point nine trillion. If you compare that to last year, which we're at the point now where government spending had already started during 2020 for COVID stuff, we were uh, at $1.5 trillion a year ago, same date. So we're already 400 billion beyond that. And a lot of that has been due to the stimulus checks, but we have to remember that stimulus checks were just a fraction of the amount of money that the government spent on other stuff like corporate bailouts and uh, international welfare. And of course, Congress padding their own wall. It's a little bit in the process. Now let's dive a little bit deeper into the numbers. During the month of April, the United States government spent about $665 billion, which is a monster amount of money for one month of spending. So the question is, how was it uh, such a large month for spending, but uh, it didn't have as big of a deficit as you might imagine? Well, it's simply because of tax receipts. Tax receipts have started to come in from people paying their income taxes. Take a look at this chart. This is a chart of total federal receipts. So this is basically all of the income that the federal government is receiving from tax taxes. Now you can see here that the trend is clearly up and you can also see that there are spikes. And so you might be asking, what are those spikes from? Well, simply that's usually April of every year, which is when that income taxes are due. Now, if you look at the month with the most federal income, so far to date, you're gonna see last year, which was the month of July. Now, what is so significant about the month of July in a year with a pandemic where there's lockdowns and restrictions and companies going bankrupt and people losing their jobs, that is the month in which tax deadlines were extended to last year. Yes, your income might have been cut, but the federal government actually got a raise. Now, this most recent month is very significant when looking at this chart, because normally the spikes in income happen during the month that taxes are due. Well, what month is the tax deadline this year? It's in May. So we'll see what this chart updates to next month when all the federal uh, receipts come in for income taxes since May is the deadline this year. I would anticipate a large spike, especially considering the fact that April is not even tax deadline and we're already seeing a much bigger spike than we've ever seen in a non-tax deadline month before. Now, this extra income for the federal government does a couple of things. Number one, it means that they don't have to draw down on the Treasury General account, which I, I bet 
that if you've been around the channel for a while, you probably uh, were thinking at the beginning of this video that I was going to be talking about the Treasury General account because if you spend more than you make, there's only two ways to do it. You can either borrow or you can use your previously earned income in your savings account. Same thing with the federal government. Their savings account is called the Treasury General account. Their Treasury General account is virtually unchanged and in fact it had a little bit of a spike over the last month as tax receipts started to come in. And so they weren't drawing down on their previously earned income to spend all this extra money during the month of April. They also weren't adding much to the national debt. The national debt only went up by about $40 billion. And so between the national debt, small increase, the small drawdown in the Treasury general account, and the increase in tax receipts, it gave the federal government enough income in order to justify a continued explosion in spending. Now, especially in light of recent inflation data, you're probably thinking, hey, if all of this new money that's going into the economy because this is money that is being it, it's expansionary this is fiscal policy that expands the money supply this is money being injected into the economy it's causing the total supply of money to grow and in light of the recent inflation data that we've seen why is the government continuing to spend so much money the basic answer is that the government needs prices to go up so that their tax receipts can continue to go up because if you want your tax receipts to go up you don't have to increase the tax rates all you have to do is make the price of everything a lot higher and then your tax income will increase and so while it might increase their total debt amount short term at least it will decrease their debt burden and if you want to understand how that mechanism works and why that's the case check out this video many of you have said this is the best video I've ever made so if you haven't watched it yet I promise you won't be disappointed and so all the shenanigans that the Federal Reserve in conjunction with the federal government have been engaging in with monetary and fiscal policy for really 20 plus years now, they've gotten themselves into a position similar to Aaron Ralstead as depicted in the movie 127 Hours. Spoiler alert, if you haven't seen the movie, he's hiking or biking in a canyon and he gets his arm stuck in between a big boulder and the side of the canyon wall. And so he's got two choices. One is a more painful option that will save his life, and the other option is a less painful option that will end up killing him. He can either cut off his arm, which is very painful and difficult to do, but in the end it would save his life, or he could just stay there, pass out, go to sleep, and slowly die. And the economy is in a similar position right now. You can allow deflation to happen. You can allow the bankruptcies to happen. You can allow the defaults to roll across the economy. You can allow prices to collapse, just like a fire burning up the dead wood. The crash and the depression is the cure for the malinvestment and the false wealth and the booms. So you can withdraw your intervention, you can withdraw your easy money, and you can choose the painful option that in the end will set the foundation for a robust and strong economy going forward. Or or you can allow the economy to continue to force you into giving it ever more increasing amounts of stimulus and new money that short term is less painful but long term will kill the economy through the death or the collapse of the purchasing power of the currency unfortunately i think we know which option they're probably going to take as always i really appreciate you guys thank you so much for watching have a good day